By default, Pulsar is wide open, allowing communication with producers and consumers via plain text. Because Pulsar is often handling sensitive information for companies, it is important that security features are enabled. Pulsar supports network segmentation and authorization access control lists, also known as ACLs, to restrict communication to only verified IP addresses. Pluggable authentication mechanisms are supported in Pulsar to authenticate with brokers and proxies. This authentication first occurs when the connection is established with a Pulsar broker and then reoccurs every 60 seconds by default. As just discussed, out of the box, producers and consumers communicate with Pulsar brokers in plain text. That means no encryption or security by default. In addition to authentication and authorization, data also must be encrypted while in transit to and from Pulsar. This prevents so-called man-in-the-middle attacks. TLS is an abbreviation for Transport Layer Security, and it is a form of cryptography. It uses both a public key to encrypt messages and a private key to, in, uh, to decrypt them. There are three types of these public-private key pairs. For TLS encryption, you need both a certificate authority and a server key pair. For client authentication, there's a third requirement for a client key pair. The certificate authority, shown on the right here, is a private key and should be held in a very secure location. We recommend this secure computer be wholly disconnected, fully encrypted, and air-gapped. The, the uh, public key, on the other hand, can be shared freely. This key is also referred to as the trust certificate or trust cert and is shown on the left side of the figure. Here is the flow of this process for creating the server client key pair. First, the administrator generates a private key and a certificate request. Then the administrator uses the certificate authority private key to sign the certificate request. Once signed, the certificate is generated. This certificate is then the public key for that specific server client key pair. Here is how the TLS encryption plays out. The uh, clients use the trust certificate or the public key to verify that the server has a key pair that is signed by the certificate authority. An attacker, specifically a man in the middle attacker, will not have access to the certificate authority to create a signed key pair. Once TLS encryption is configured, TLS authentication can be established. There are two sets of keys and certificates used for TLS authentication. Firstly, servers possess keys and certificates for the client to verify server identity. Secondly, the clients also have keys and certificates that the server uses to verify client identity. Both certificates for the clients and servers are generated using the certificate authority. With TLS authentic authentication, the trust cert is used by the server to verify that the client key pair is signed by the certificate authority. Kerberos is a network authentication protocol and is currently the most common authentication method for Pulsar. Kerberos provides authentic authentication for both client and server applications. Kerberos uses the simple authentication and security layer framework, abbreviated as SASL. Pulsar uses Java Authentication and Authorization Service, also known as JAAS, to configure the simple authentication and security layer framework. Like Pulsar, TLS is not enabled by default for Bookkeeper. However, TLS encryption and authentication is available. Bookies are required to each have their own key and certificate. For mutual authentication, clients need to provide a key and a certificate as well. Similarly, TLS can be enabled on Zookeeper as long as you are running version 2.5 or later. Zookeeper uses an identifier called a Distinguished Name, or DN, 
that is used by every broker and command line interface tool. The same DN is used by all brokers and CLIs. The DN can be modified to customize what gets placed on the access control list.